comes to this, you better live it how you spit it. Don't be equivalent to subtraction. I give you the difference. Let's go. Full of work and a take full of gas. That's the yeah. soul. Hey, what's going on? This is Ed Lee here with NYC Street Legends once again with my man, uh, MC Nautilus, the awesomest, the best, my favorite. Chiller. Yeah. So, anyways, right now we were talking about in the last video about Cop Watch, a very cool organization, and now we're going to talk about um, some other things that I just didn't have time for in the last video, such as what's the history behind Cop Watch? Cop Watch is a part. It's an alliance called the Justice Alliance, um, and that is a affiliation between different groups in the boroughs um but i think the main one is justice committee which okay. uh, ha itself is a very interesting organization because it comes out of the young lords party which was like uh i believe like a puerto rican uh nationalist organization back in the day uh they i think they were from like uptown um puerto before, it was, like, cool. before it was gentrified yeah all right and uh you know they they organized as a way to protect themselves and you know they transformed themselves into a community organization cool. and uh and now we have things like cop watch which still help the community in in many different ways so it's cool to to learn about that legacy um cuz you know you don't you're not going to learn about that on CNN or some shit so uh just Definitely listening not. to the OGs and yeah. shit you know telling me uh it, it's it's a uh, Latino organization, um, Hispanic or Chicano, whatever you want to use. Uh, and as a Asian American, you know, it's it's a different community that I'm I'm as an outsider I'm coming into, and you know, it's a great opportunity for me to learn and see my role in uh, you know making New York just a better place. You know, and, I like uh, that. taking part in the struggle. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember in the last video you talked about like um, the police action in Ferguson and how we all know that what happened there wasn't really cool. Um, but you know I see that you guys working in New York City and I know you said you're working in all the boroughs, right? Jackson Heights, Sunset Park. You know you guys have some people in the Bronx, stuff like that in Harlem. But um, are you guys affiliated with any national organizations, groups? Is this like a nationwide movement or how is this affiliated? Go ahead. Definitely, I think. We are part of a movement that has no real central authority. Um, it's kind of like a spontaneous emergent phenomenon. Uh, anyone who's on Facebook enough, I, I'm pretty sure will have seen uh, videos out of this Facebook page called Cop Block, you know? And a lot of the videos on Cop Block are just heinous, right? And they're, they're shocking. And a lot of them aren't filmed by trained cop watch people. You know, they're just right. filmed by bystanders who had a phone. We all have phones with cameras on them, uh, and they just took it out and was like, "The shit that I'm seeing is fucked up. I'm gonna record him." And you know, you have these channels such as Cop Lock, who can put it out and make more people aware of the situation because you have a lot of cop police apologists. You know what I'm saying? You have you have a whole city right now who's raising money for the for the officer who who killed like Mike Brown, Michael Brown, you know what I'm saying? Uh wearing fucking uh, rubber bands and shit saying like I am Darren Wilson. And that's insane because it just shows there's this huge divide between understanding of like you know, black lives and and young lives versus like this I would say just white supremacy in general. And it's crypto, you know, it's crypto white supremacy because it's like, it's not overt like it was back in the day, but it still is. And people first have to get riled up and they have to be in a way politicized because it's not, you don't, you, we're not born politicized, right? We're, something has to happen. We have to meet the right person. We have to read the right book, see the right video, which kind of propels us onto a path that that realigns our priorities because we have so many choices right now right a friday night comes you can you can go to the club and with your friends and hang out you know that's 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 normal for a lot of people or you can take some time and teach people about uh how to handle police you know that's just one thing there's so I'm many definitely things on the second do. one yeah the clubbing you know, you know i really prefer fulfillment over you know entertainment you know and that's really awesome you know, i think it's so great man i'm so glad people like you're out there you know, I think 
people like me are out there because someone before me showed me, right? And and I just want to make make it clear, like you know, I'm what I do is isn't it's it's like a, a father raising a kid, you know what I'm saying? And right. Dave Chappelle said it best, you know, or, or I think it was Chris Rock. He was like, you know, I'm raising my kids. He's like, dude, you're supposed to be raising your kids. What you what do you want yeah. a cookie, right? And yeah. it's like to me, as someone who's like extremely fortunate, uh because of my skin color and stuff like it's really the least I can do and and one of the things that you know it's still a very big privilege for me to be able to do this and and just learn from people and, and have people tell me their stories and trust me enough you know um, and it's really a privilege to work with people through my organization that are just I, I feel like wow you know like they showed me a whole different side of the world that money can't buy. You know what I'm saying? It's really yeah. your passion, your dedication, your time, persistence. And I mean, people like you too. You know, like, I've learned so much shit from you, Ed. Like, it's, hey man, it's, it's ridiculous. Life. It's ridiculous. So, um, you know, maybe Cop Watch isn't for everybody. I'm not saying everybody should do Cop Watch, right? But everyone should know that the police, you know, you shouldn't have absolute faith in the, in the system. You know, I think yeah. that's one thing we can all do. That's a passive thing. That's not an active, oh, let's go out on a Friday night and, like, walk around, you know? Yeah. But you should always look at them and know they don't trust you. They see you as a suspect. That's their training. Where does the NYPD come from, you know? Their their whole organization is based upon the old school, like, uh, union busters. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that's yeah. where they came from. That's their culture from way back in their inception. So... The more people realize this and can get politicized and maybe even radicalized, you know, and start to start to question the party line, I think that's that's the whole point of what you I know, do. Actually, you know? it brings up a great uh, question for me because when you talk about like your involvement with these organizations, and I know you made personal sacrifices in terms of time, things like that. Um, how do you fit it onto your schedule? I know you have a band that you work with. You also work with uh, writing les letters for people that are on, you know, prisoners, mm -hmm. on you know, that, that haven't been really tried correctly. You do also all kinds of, like, uh, permaculture, things like that, really awesome stuff. How do you fit, plus you work, right? Right, right, How right. do you fit this into your schedule? You know, and I, I know other people out there may be wanting to get involved. They see these actions. They see the guy saying, I can't breathe. They see that video. Then they see the guy die. You know, they see some crazy Eric videos Garner. like this. Yeah. They see what's going on in Ferguson. They see this isn't right. I want to do something. I want to take some action. How do you put into your schedule? How can they maybe you know find the time to make this happen, make a difference? Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm trying to figure out where to start because like, I guess it's always like a lot of people have told me like I'm really roundabout in my in my <laughs> in my uh, uh, explanations. But I mean, I I really got to start by being like pretty like Zen Buddhist about it because um, I always see like the the two perspectives you can you can take on things and. People can see me and what I do as, as personal sacrifices, you know, and yeah, it's very tiring and, and I, I struggle to get enough sleep and rest and eat enough, you know, it's a sacrifice, but on the other hand, it's also, again, it's like a privilege, it's a reward, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a reward in its own right to to be part of a community that I think people forget, like, communities on Facebook aren't real, you know, like... It's only what you can touch, you know what I'm saying? Like, the stuff that you can touch, that's what's real. Right. And the, the bond and the, the trust, we, we get face-to-face. -face. Um, Facebook and, and the internet is a tool. It can it can help us, uh, it can help us coordinate, but, like, that, that will never substitute, like, real community. And what does that mean? That means knowing your neighbor, not just keeping in touch with someone around the world when, in different time zones, you know what I'm saying? That, that community can wait, you know? You gotta... You got to look out for the person next to you because one day you might run out of sugar or something. You got to go borrow some. And one day a cop could be fucking choking your ass and somebody got to get on tape. That's that's community for me. So it's a privilege. How do I fit into my schedule? And it really just is about being efficient with your time. You know, like uh, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll get over this in go over this in another video. But like, you know, personally, I don't I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Um you know that's that's uh, a means to an end right like I'm part of the straight edge community and they one thing that I've gotten out of it maybe not many other people have but it's just all the extra time and resources it frees for me um, to do what I love uh, 
you know, music, all the elements of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Like people think, I, I always tell people like, oh, I'm tired. I don't have enough time, but I have a lot of time, you know, and, and self care is definitely one thing that's overlooked. Uh, one thing that's coming back to me now, like kind of kicking my ass, like I should have taken a little better care of myself. So it's okay to, to love yourself and to sleep in sometimes. I used to be like super high strung, like oh, I gotta wake up at eight o'clock and do these 10 things, you know? Um, but if you're not well rested, you're not gonna do anything well. So, um, just eat enough. The the various things I do, they're very geo specific, like geolocation, like some things I do in the Lower East Side, you know, Jackson Heights. I grow food deeper in Queens, you know. I got band practice in in Williamsburg and fucking Brooklyn. Okay. You know what I'm saying I gotta run all these errands. It's a privilege because I got a fucking unlimited metro pass, and living in New York City, that's that's a possible thing. Um, just gotta be super efficient with your time, like, when you're on the train, like, for two hours a day, split up right between different locations, I can be writing lyrics, I can be planning out what my next move is, sure. uh, doing calculations, whatever the fuck, you know. So for people out there that are also having, like, a crazy schedule like yourself, because we're all in New York City, they see New York City is, you know, a lot of artists, a lot of people that are, like, you know, pursuing second interests besides the regular daytime jobs, mm -hmm. you know, um, what hours do you put into? I know you said work about like four hours. Is it four hours a week? Four hours. Um. You mean like for my job? Like no, for this particular cop watch thing. Okay. Like, yeah. It's, it's very organized, right? Yeah. Um. I think you said it was like eight to twelve at night or something. How, how sure. You, uh, what's your schedule? There's like? different patrols. I usually try to dedicate at least eight hours. Okay. A month. So that's sure, maybe okay. one patrol every other week. Sure. Um. You know, cause. I, I I try to give myself quotas. You know, you know? Little bits add up, man. You could take like eight hours a week, and it might, you know, I mean, like eight hours a month, right? And it might seem like some some even just gives two hours a month. Maybe mm -hmm. even just you know three, like they just do one shift. A shift is four hours. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so they do one shift a month, four hours. But you multiply it by a hundred times, it's four hundred hours. That's ten whole work weeks. But if you just say, oh, I just don't have time for that, zero. Zero times a million zero. is still yeah. zero. So just yeah. put in a little bit, even one shift a month. I think that's awesome. Yeah, dude. And it, when do you? Uh, when do you? Um, is there a certain day of the week that you go out? I don't know. You know, I try. I try to schedule it because I'm. I'm lucky that my team is has enough people that it can fill in. You know, they can fill in people for me if I'm not there. If I can fill in for people if they're not there. Uh, you know, we get a a good number of people to go out on the patrol to be safe, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, we, my team is out in the streets like maybe twice a week, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Twice a week, once a week at least. And we all work, we're not professional cop watchers, you know, this isn't right. like a fucking job, right? This is community service. So everybody understands you gotta sleep. We but ain't gonna do be... go through this, some training and stuff. How long is the training? Today? Training's like two hours. Oh, cool. Two hours, yeah. It's it's very simple. A lot of it is just on the field experience. There are roles within the team that are aren't too intense, right? The most intense role we're not gonna put you in if you just your first patrol. You know is it saying? like is it kind of like a mentor relation? Like if I came to cop watch, whenever like this weekend, right? Would it be like you keep two hours with you and you teach me, or is there like a set like uh, like a class you go to? How does it yeah, work? it's it's more like a class. Like at least for me, I I got trained. Um, by my friend Age, shout out to Age, uh, right. that is crew. Um, he he basically just ran me through the history and and told, gave me a good foundation, like a good mental framework, like why this is necessary, and and kind of warned me of of some pitfalls and and you know that was like a two hour thing, one to two hours, told me the roles and why the roles are necessary, but you learn really quickly out down the street because. Uh, yeah, the best way is by doing it, right? Best way is by doing it. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, you learn like not to get discouraged when you do encounter pushback from the community, which is not at all often, you know, right. because of the reputation that NYPD has. Bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. most people are are definitely for less policing and, and right. just let us fucking do our thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not bothering anybody. Right. We're not committing crimes. Like. Oh wait, you're gonna stop me just because I'm brown and black, you know, or Asian even, you know. There's yeah. there's a lot of like Asian people. Or you look a certain way, you dress a certain way, you talk a certain way, you're in exactly. a certain place, at a certain time, certain gender, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Even so, transgender. 
you know, oh, they're huge problem. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Especially Jackson Heights, right? Yeah, the big community yeah. out there. Yeah. So, our our biggest challenges are knowing when to go out. Cause let's just say you have four hours for each patrol. When do you schedule that? You know what I'm saying? Is it a Friday from eleven to to uh you know eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, you know eleven to three, yeah. or is it after school? Cause a lot of a lot of cops stop and frisk students. You know, right. You have to be. Pick your battles, I guess. Yeah, you have to be efficient with your allocation resources. Yeah, yeah. You only got so many people that we all gotta work. Well, we all gotta pay our bills. You know what I'm saying? We're definitely not backed by the Koch brothers. No, no, no. This is all like oh well, pure, all completely pure passion. passion. Yeah, pure yeah. passion. So, um, and it's if you look at it as as a like laborious, yeah, you're not gonna come. Right. If you look at it as a a way to get closer to people and, and learn how to talk to people, meet people outside that you would never have talked to. It's great. You know, it's it's a way to reconnect with your community. I'm excited, you know? man. I'm coming out. So yeah. thank you so much. If you have any more questions or comments, just put them below. And uh, you know, he'll be online, I'll be online. I'm gonna join the, I'm gonna go to some stuff real soon and find out what this is all about, try to answer questions and maybe we'll even get some more people from the organization involved with this channel right here. It'd be super cool. So thanks again for tuning in. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great one. Peace.